right, hello everyone um, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Rachel Klein and I will be your presenter for today's topic. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, reporting and membership um, and specifically how to enter in criteria for the report to get the people that you want and also um, how to set up the report to print out the information that you want for those people that you've selected. Before we jump into the topic though, I want to go over just a couple things for you. Um, on your GoToWebinar toolbar, you do have a questions tab. Uh, feel free to type in a question there if you have any. Uh, Kellyanne is listening in with me today and she'll be happy to answer those for you if I can't. Um, I do ask though that you please keep the questions on topic. Um, if you have an off-topic question or a topic that is specific to uh, your data, uh, please call us or shoot us an email uh, to support at churchwindows.com um, and it would be better for us to answer it that way um, than through the webinar. So today, the membership reporting topic, um, this information has been pulled from one of our workbooks. It's actually the Membership 204 workbook. So if you feel like you want to get a copy of the information that we have gone over today, um, you'll need to go out to churchwindows.com. On the left hand side, click right here on this link that says workbooks. And that's going to take you to all of our workbooks that are available for purchase. Um, so on this page, if you scroll down to M204, which is right here, let me grab my highlighter again. Um, we are specifically talking um, over pages 2 through 12. So if you want something like this in a hard copy, it's M204, pages 2 through 12. Um, you can download the workbook, the entire workbook, for $12. Um, or you can pay $22 and we'll mail it to you um, and it'll be in a binder ready format. All right, so this is at our website, churchwindows.com, under this section over here called Workbooks. And all our workbooks are listed here, but specifically M204 is what we're talking about today. All right, let me get out of here. And let's get Church Windows open, and we are going to get into membership. All right, so from this main membership portal screen, you're going to see the reports button right here with the printer and the little envelope and the labels. So from reports, you have a lot of options from the membership side. So you can come in here to reports directory export. This is where you're going to go um, when you're ready to pull your information out for people. So when you need a report on those active people or you need a report on those people um, that gave a certain amount, say you handle the, the giving as well. Um, or say you need a report, uh, a directory report printed. You're going to print your directory. You print it twice a year. This is where you go. Um, or if you need to export the data. Say you need to send information to LifeTouch because they're printing your uh, pictorial directories for you. Um, this is where you will go for all of your reporting needs, or I should say most of your reporting needs. You also have labels. If you're doing a mailing, that's where you want to go. Church Windows will print um, to uh, most label sheets. Um, I know the Avery 5160 is a super popular one. That's our default. Um, but that's where you would go to get those labels out. You also have the option to email. Say you want to send a, uh, an email blast out to all of your active members. You can do that by going through email here. Um, there is some setup involved in the emailing process. Um, you can call us or there's a lot of good information out on our website as well for email setup and there is a, a webinar on it. Alright, so down here you have birth date, anniversary, 
groups, classes, skills, interests. These are some of our standard reports. We have some things preset in them for you. Um, so if you're ever needing to do um, a birthday report, say you have a, a someone in your church that, that actually handwrites birthday cards, um, you would come in under birthday and you could choose reports directory export to get that report. Or say you want to email all your birthday people, you have that option. Or generate labels for all those birthday people, you have that option as well. Same thing goes for anniversary. You can, you can get in touch with your people who have anniversaries in a particular month. Or people that are, that are in a specific group or class. Say you need to email everybody on your finance committee. You could do that by going under groups and classes. Um, also skills and interests. Say you need some help in the office and you want to go look at who is interested in helping out in the church office. You can do that by going under skills and interest and running uh, just a regular report. Okay. But for today we are specifically looking at reports directory export. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on that and it's going to take us to step one for reporting. So Step one, this is where you select who you want on your report. So this is where you put in that criteria of the people that you want included on your report. This step has nothing to do with what information is going to print on the report. So for example, this is not where you would say you want to see people's addresses included. That's going to be done on the second step. Step one is just where we pick who we want or enter the criteria for the people we need to see on our report. Okay, so as you can see, you have four tabs on this screen. You might not need to use all four of them, but you have options for setting up that criteria of who you need. So first tab is going to be the people tab. Then you have the giving and pledging, then you have the accounts, and then you have the sort tab. So let's start specifically on the people tab. This is where you can go in and plug in membership criteria. If you hit the down arrow in here, you have so many options. You can query on attendance, you can query on groups and classes, you can query on age, baptism date, you can look at people who have an email, you can look at people that are in a specific geographic area. You get my drift. Lots of options here for querying on different people. Okay. Next, let's jump over here to the right on the giver number tab. So giver number tab is going to be if you need to query on people who have a number, don't have a number, or maybe people who have a number in a particular range. You can do all that right here in this giver number box. Now looking a little further down, we have an include box. So by default, we're going to look at membership members and we're going to look at membership visitors. If you just want members, you would simply click in here and uncheck the visitors box. Same with membership groups. These would be groups or classes that were created in membership. So this would be if you wanted those groups and classes to be included or listed on the report itself. Donations individuals, donations groups, those are people or groups that have been entered in just through the donations module. So if you don't use the donations module, don't worry about those last two boxes. But if you do and you want to see those donations givers included on the report, you would check those bottom two boxes. All right, let's go up to giving and pledging. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. This is more criteria, so more options for who you want to see or don't want to see on your report. Under giving include and pledging include, as you can see, the default is set to all. So if you don't do donations, you have nothing to do with donations, you don't want this on your report, you can simply skip over this tab. But if you're ever in a situation where you do need to see your query on giving, you have lots of options here to pick only people who gave, only people with giving in a certain range, and those who didn't give. You also have those same options down here under pledging include. Off to the right, um, you can query on those who are set to uh, receive a statement or those who are set to not receive a statement. 
Also, you can look at people who are um, set gives with family. They're in a giving unit or those people who are not. You also have the option for a date range. You can query in on giving in a particular date range. Um, say you want to look at giving back from 2015, you can easily go in there and shift the year. All right, the accounts tab. Once again, if you're not worried about giving or donations on this report, you can simply skip this tab. Um, but if you are, you have the option to query in on a campaign. So you can select to just see people from a specific giving campaign. Um, or you also have the option to move um, one or as many as you like accounts over to the right um, by using this arrow. And then that would look at people who just gave to that account or just pledged to that account. So the giving and pledging tab and this accounts tab, these two can really work together to get the criteria that you are looking for. All right, sort tab. This tab is super important. Um, make sure you go to this tab before you hit the next button. Um, this is the order that you want your people to print out in. So it's very important that you specify this um, before you go on to the next screen. Uh, once again, you have a lot of options in here for this sort order that you want. Um, name is a pretty popular one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just choose first, last. That's going to put all my people in alphabetical order. All right, let me go ahead and erase my drawings. And I'm going to jump back to the people tab, and I want to put in a, an example um, of a criteria that you might use. Uh, this is the example from the workbook that I'm using. So say we want just active members in a particular date range. So active members. I'm going to go down to my status field and this is where I'm going to specify um, who my active people are. So my active people are active member, associate member, and let's say inactive member. So all of these statuses make someone an active member at my church. This might not be the same for you. Everybody kind of does things a little differently on how they define active people. But for our example today, I'm going to check three of those and I'm going to hit plus selection. You have to hit plus selection because that's what inputs the criteria and it'll pop down below. Now, I also said I wanted to do people ages 25 to 50. So to do that, I need to hit an and or an or, or the parentheses option before I can put in my next piece of criteria. So because I want people that have a particular status of one, two, or three, and they have to be 25 through 50, I need to make sure I hit the and option. If I was okay with people that had a status of one, two, or three, or they were in the age of 25 through 50, then I would choose the or option. But because I need both, I have to go with and. Now I'm going to go up to the top and I am going to pick age. Now you have a lot, a lot of options here under age, but I'm going to go ahead and choose the between and I'm going to type in 25 through 50. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit plus selection. I'm going to uncheck visitors over here on the right because I just want my active members. I'm not worried about giver number. I'm going to skip that. I'm not worried about giving or pledging. I'm not worried about giving accounts. I'm going to skip those two. And I'm going to make sure I go to my sort tab and set my sort order to what I want. And I already did. That's alphabetical last first. Okay. Now, let's say this is a report that I am going to use a lot. So I want to save this criteria for my active people, 25 through 50. To do that, you come down here to the bottom under Save Selections, and you need to hit this little floppy disk first. This is telling it that you want to save this criteria. So I'm going to hit the floppy, and I'm going to go ahead and title it active members, Oop, let me capitalize that because that's going to bother me, active members 25 through 50. I'm going to say OK. And now under save selections I have this report name. So if I close this screen 
and I come back in to reports, reports directory export. Down here under save selections, if I want to call up a saved report, I simply hit the down arrow, select my active members report, and then it automatically plugs in all of my criteria, see it unchecked visitors, um, and then I can go to the sort tab and it saved my sort order as well. And so this is an easy, easy way to save a criteria that you use a lot for a report without having to re-enter it each time. All right, so let me go ahead and hit the next button. And that's going to take us to our step two. So step one is where we pick who we want or we enter our criteria. Step two is going to be how we decide the report is going to be formatted, okay, or what information we want to see for the people we selected on the previous screen. So you have a lot of options up here on the top left under this options tab. Each one of these selections is going to do something a little different than the other. Okay, so basic up here in the top left. Basic is, um, I would say, unless you're exporting or running a directory, basic is going to be your go-to report. You can probably use this 95% of the time. Uh, basic report is very, very um, easy to use and easy to adjust columns. So if we choose basic and we come down here, see there's a lot in here. You can make as many basic reports as you want. And I'm going to choose basic columnar report. Everybody's going to have this. This is our default report and this is going to include name, address, and phone. So if I hit print just so you can get your print preview idea, it's going to be just that. So this is going to be our people that have a, a, a status code we selected and that are between the ages of 25 and 50. Basic columnar gives us name, address, block, home, phone. Now let's say we need to get rid of address and put their email in their home phone. To do that you can make a new basic report. Hit by hitting the new button we'll call it contact list. You can also adjust your paper or your um, your orientation up here if you need to. So if you have maybe um, five columns or more columns you might want to switch it to landscape so it all fits on one page. I'm gonna hit OK and then it's gonna take me right into this column selector screen. Um, this is where you go in and you tell it what fields you want to see on your report. So available columns on the left, these are all the columns that you have the option to include on the report itself. Visible columns are the columns that will appear or that are already showing on the report. So I want to get rid of address block. I'm going to highlight it, move it to the left, and I'm going to look for email. You can also type in an E if you want and it'll jump down to your E's. I'm going to move email address over. And you can also adjust your column width. I'm going to shrink name down a little bit just so it all fits. I'm going to hit OK. So now my contact list is going to be saved in here. So in the future, I can reselect this report. I don't have to remake it each time. And I'm going to hit print. And now I'm going to get a report with name, home phone, and email address. All right, basic report, super easy to use. Uh, custom. Custom is um, a bit more involved. The custom report actually takes you into a designer. So let me put the new button in so you can see what it looks like. So this is going to actually open up the report designer um, where you can drag and drop and build the report from scratch. Um, this is a lot more involved. We do have more help on this on our website or you can call us. But the option is here for you to customize and get exactly, exactly the layout that you want. All right, let me close that. All right, mail merge export. This is what you are going to use if you need to take the data out. So say you're sending your information to LifeTouch um, and they're gonna make your directory for you. Um, you would choose mail merge slash export. Um, you can use one that you've already set up if you wish, or you can hit new. Oops, LifeTouch. 
And then from here, you can, using the arrows in the middle, again, pick the fields that you want for the export itself. Um, let's see, file box, this is where you would hit the browse button and pick where you want um, that information to save on your computer. And you also pick the delimiter here as well. All information, this is a great report if you are, um, let's see, wanting to see all the information that you have printed on someone. So basic all information report is just that. If we hit print, you can see that basic all information report is going to print every single field of information that you have on that person um, in membership. Um, this is a good report too if you want people to update their information. Um, you can hand these out to people if you want. Um, but basic all information report is just that. It gives you everything it has on somebody. Directory, this is your directory uh, report. This is only going to look at people that have an include on directory set to yes. Um, also in the Dropbox, we have some of our default layouts in here you can pick from, um, or you can create your own or edit one of these to see the information that you want. Um, let's see if this is a good one. Three column directory with email, let me hit print. Yeah, so this is going to give you um, the name of someone and it's going to give you the primary's first names, kids names, address, home phone, email. Now you can go in and customize these to get email and cell phone included on the report if you need that. Uh, directory export. Um, directory export is what you want to use if you're sending something out to LifeTouch. Not this option, I misspoke there. This is what you want to use because, and let me explain it, you specifically, if you're doing an export and you want families to be kept together and you want only the families that have an include on directory set to yes, you want to make sure you choose the directory export option. Mail merge export is going to look at everybody regardless of what their directory report order is and it's not going to by default combine your families. So it would keep everyone listed separately. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're looking to export um, or how you need the information, depending upon which one you choose. Um, okay, we're right at 22 minutes. I know I went a little over. There was a lot to cover today. Um, let me look over here in questions and see if we have anything. If you have any questions regarding the topic, please type those in over there on the questions tab. Um, and Kelly Ann and I will do our best to answer them for you. Um, let's see here. If you need to go, go ahead and sign out. I know I'm at almost 23 minutes. I went over. Um, so that's fine if you need to leave. But if you have questions, type them in. Um, if I don't see any questions popping in, then we will just go ahead and um, close up shop. All right. I don't have any questions coming in. I hope that's a good sign that I was clear and you guys understood what I went over. Um, also, if you want this workbook, head out to our website, churchwindows.com, um, and you can purchase the M204 workbook. Today we went over pages 2 through 12, so if you want a hard copy, you can do that. Um, if you don't want to purchase it, we are recording the webinar, um, and it'll be up on the website um, at the end of the week. I hope you all learned something new that will help make your job a little bit easier for you, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you.